The importance of water. This is Go on Shaw TV. Go is on location today out at the Comox Lake, the beautiful Comox Lake. Joining me, Courtney City Councillor Bob Wells. We are talking about water conservation. Big deal this year, no snowpack. It's really causing some issues. What do people really need to be aware of? I think the first thing is, is just be aware that there is no snowpack. Uh, we're about 15% of where our traditional levels are and the sun is forecast to just beat down on us all summer. And it's going to be hot, scorching, uh, with very low water flows. And uh, traditionally, you know, year to year, um, when we look back in December, we're using basically a third of the water that we use in the summertime. So uh, when, we, when we get to the summertime, it's mainly water sprinklers and, and uh, higher flow um, uh, activities like that that are causing right. huge strains on, on uh, our resources. And, okay. and it's a finite resource. It is a finite resource. And um, the number one thing is the restrictions have started. So what level are we at? Right now, we're currently at level two. Level uh, stage two, yeah, okay. Stage two water restrictions. So it basically means no watering during the day. So between okay. 4 a.m. and uh, 9 a.m. and between 4 p.m. and uh, 10 p.m. Okay, so if people wanted to, and there also have particular days for sprinkles, right? Absolutely, okay. so best thing to do is go to comoxvalleyrd.ca okay. and uh, you can see which days, so odd days and even days de okay. depending on uh, And if your people house. don't have the internet, can they call and find out? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's three three four six thousand. Okay. Is is awesome. the number for the regional district. Okay. And um, and so I, I'm I'm on behalf of the, the regional district as the chair of the water committee. Right. Uh, okay. But also the city of Courtney also has its own uh, water uh, strategies okay. and uh, enforcement bylaw officers. All right. So can you hang out for a minute? Yeah. yeah. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Don't go away. There's more coming up. We're back. Go is on location at Comox Lake. Behind us now is the dam. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Staying with me here is Bob Wells, city councillor for the city of Courtney and also regional district chair of the Water Commission. Is that right? Absolutely. Is that how you say yep. that? Okay. Yep. So, what's the rebate deal all about? So uh, folks that are uh, want to use water sprinklers and stuff, you can go and actually get a $300 uh, rebate for oh. uh, smart meters. And okay. so what smart meters do is they basically, uh, if it's a, a day that it's raining, mm -hmm. they're not going to uh, actually turn on if they already know that there's moisture there. Oh. And, and so the great thing That's is, you know, cool. yeah, the last couple of days we had some rain. Yeah. And so it would actually mean that those sprinklers don't turn on. And cool. so they're not, they're not uh, taxing the, our water system like they would normally. That's kind of cool. Absolutely. And okay, there's also. And low, what is it, low flush toilets? Yeah, low flow flush toilets. So, okay. um, uh, again, a rebate uh, through the regional district. And okay. with those, basically, uh, you can go in, uh, you know, to any hardware store, uh, purchase a, a low flow toilet, and get a rebate on that. Uh, Do you know what the rebate is? How many? I don't know the dollar okay. amount off the top of my head. So they um, just come in with the receipt and. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you can contact the regional district okay. with this. Awesome. And most most uh, hardware stores are going to have that information okay. at hand. Cool. And it, and and even beyond that, you know, uh, for people that are conscious about this, uh, you can get all sorts of low flow water things for shower heads and, and okay. other things around your house, uh, just to reduce the uh, amount of water usage. Well, like for me, when I take a shower, I'll turn the water on, get wet, turn it off. Mm -hmm. Shampoo, do whatever I'm doing, and then turn the water back on, rinse, turn it off again. See, my dad taught me that <laughs> 35 years ago. Yeah. Because we were in the country on a well. Yeah. And he's like, if you're not using it, turn it off. So I was trained <laughs> years ago. Yeah, absolutely. So, and now my daughter has been trained in that same way. So anyway, thank you so much for all the information. That's fantastic. So check out the website. And if you don't have internet, give them a call and you can get more information. Right now, we are going to be joined by, through video, uh, Kate Brown, who has done a marvelous feature on a 100-year history of the Courtney Fire Department, all in celebration of the Courtney Centennial. Have a look. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are now on location in Comox in front of the Fire Department with Chief Gord Schreiner. 
Why is it so important for people to honor the water restrictions? Well, of course, the water is very important for the whole uh, area here. Um, very, very dry spring this year, and we need the water for domestic uses, for your drinking and, and so on, but we also need it for firefighting. Uh, okay. In a town like Comox here, we consume more water during the day than our water tank can actually take in from the lake. Oh, really? So if we use too much water, typically the pressures will be low in the end of the day, and if we had a large fire, we may not have enough water to, uh, wow. to fight that fire. I yeah. didn't realize. So why are the tanks so small, or is it that... Our well, the, the tanks were sized for the community uh, at, at one time, and the community, of course, is growing. Of course. Uh, some of the supply lines uh, could be upgraded over the years, and, and those are things that we're looking at in the, with the water system to improve it as we move forward, but uh, certainly we're not there yet. So. so conservation, especially in the town of Comox, even yeah. more so than Courtney, is really important? Or is well, Courtney in the same I boat? I think most communities would be pretty much in the same boat. You know, the consumption is so high in the summertime because of the sprinkling and, and the use of water. Yeah. Right. Now, of course, you guys... In, do you, you obviously um, honor those rules here at the fire department as well? Yeah, in fact, we've changed our training quite a bit um, over the last few years in the summertime that we use okay. a lot less water in the summertime. Okay. Uh, of course, training firefighters, we need to use water, you know, uh, but in, again, in the summertime, we, we train, change the format of our training to use a lot less water. To accommodate it. Yeah. Okay, excellent. We're going to take a short break, but stay right where you are. Information coming up that you're really going to want to know. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. You're watching Go on Shaw TV. We are here in front of the Comox Fire Department Hall with me, Chief Gord Schreiner. Now, fire ban has already started, correct? Yes. So what level are we at? We're at level two for the province, which means uh, no outdoor burning, basically. Okay. Uh, each community has their own bylaws, so Comox bylaws may be different than Courtney and so on and so on, but typically right across the province now, there's no burning. Uh, again, real dry or spring we had this year. Um, the area is so dry, even that little bit of rain yesterday, uh, it hasn't done anything. Yeah, it completely um, went, it evaporated. Yeah, a cigarette <laughs> out the window in a car uh, can easily start a fire, bark mulch, okay. uh, grass on fire, and, and so on. So it's very, very uh, sensitive time of the year for fires. Yeah. Okay, now people have those outdoor backyard covered fireplaces, right? right? The ones that have the little roof on them mm -hmm. and screens on the side. Like, are those okay? Well, every community is going to be different. So okay. in the town of Comox, for example, we don't allow the burning of wood outdoors. Of so any of that? Of any of those appliances. Okay. So that's, that's a, a no. Um, moving forward, we may be looking at adjusting our bylaws for outdoor natural gas fireplaces. So the okay. more decorative type fireplaces. Okay. Uh, we'll probably be authorized in the future here in Comox, but currently okay. it's a bit of a gray area with us. I was, we were at some friends on the weekend and they had a brand new outdoor one, like you just mentioned, but it was propane. Right. And it was, it didn't have a roof on it. It yep. was an open circle about this big, yep. but it was propene. So there wasn't any sparks, there wasn't anything exactly. going on. So. And so we're looking at that right now with our bylaw in Comox to maybe okay. make an adjustment to include those type of appliances. They're more readily available. Costs have come down quite a bit on them. Okay. And as you identified, they're, they're safer in a sense that there's no sparks, which right. happens with the wood fires. And just as important, there's no smoke. So you're not impacting your neighbors' um, open windows and of laundry and, and stuff like that with smoke. Okay. Often when people smell smoke, it's, it's a bit of an uneasy feeling in the summertime to have smoke when you're um, sitting in your home or ready to go to bed and you can smell smoke coming in through your window. It just makes it a bit uneasy. So those are the things we want to get rid of is the smoke for, for that safety reason, but also okay. for health reasons. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time you're today. Welcome. Very informative. All right. So there you have it. Fire ban in place. So no burning. Now, we are going to head up to Campbell River. Marjorie Greaves is bringing us an artist profile on Susie Hansen. Have a look. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are now on location at a lovely landscape property with Steve Gray of MRM Irrigation. And we're going to talk about um, the importance of having your sprinklers working properly, of course, because we now have stage two water restrictions. Right. So what's the key thing for people who have a sprinkler system to be aware of? I think the most important thing is to have your controller set correctly. Don't have excessive run times in your sprinkler. So in other words, most people can have just one run time and it will water all their zones. The biggest mistake people make is they think that every zone, an area that needs to be watered, has to have its own runtime, and that's not the case. Oh. So, for all your zones, one runtime, maybe two if you want to water in the evening as well. 
Okay, that's so, a big one. All right, let me give you an example. Sure. So we've got a sprinkler at home. Yes. And it's programmed for 20 minutes yeah. for the, each individual zone. So they're not all running at the same time. Correct. It's one zone after another zone after another. Because uh -huh. we have six zones in our thing. Perfect. And each one's set for 20 minutes. Is okay. that okay? And it's only well, once a day. That's fine, but it depends on what kind of spray nozzles you have. So if you have oh, okay. rotors, which are like the things you see on golf courses, and they go... Tick, 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 tick. Yeah, no, we don't have that. Okay, so those run for anywhere from 25 to an hour. Okay. If you have sprays, which go psh, 10 to 15 minutes. If you have micro stuff... Maybe you want, you know, 15 to an hour. I don't know. Okay. So the so key is... So you don't is, need a lot. Is you don't necessarily need a lot, oh, okay. but you need to have the same thing on the same zone. So if you have okay. rotors and sprays on the same zone, you're going to have an area that's really dry and an area that gets flooded. So oh. you have to have them all the same. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. That totally makes yeah. sense. All right. So you may be right at 20 minutes, but okay. I don't know what you're saying. What you're okay. Right. All right. Cool. Well, we'll have to talk more in depth about it. So what you need to do at home is if you have a sprinkler system is you need to start examining how you're using it, right? Correct. How you're using it. And if Absolutely. you have any question, call the people that installed it for you. Or if you're not happy with them, then call somebody else, such as Steve. Um, right now, we're going to take a very short break, but we're going to be right back with a little more information for you. Stay right where you are. This is a rotor, and um, as you can see, it shoots about 30 feet long. Great for grass and turf and stuff. And I run these anywhere from, you know, 25 minutes to an hour, depending on the season. So the high efficiency heads, if people don't have them, can they put them on existing sprinklers? They can. If, if they okay. have um, spray heads, okay. they can put a different kind of nozzle on there. Okay. Um, but it might be more effective to reduce the run times and maybe have the zones with the spray heads run twice. So for short periods, so that it waters and then does everything else and then it comes back and waters it again. So the water has a chance to soak into the ground. Okay. This is a, what they call an MP rotator and uh, there are several different varieties. But these are kind of neat because they throw fingers of water and they throw it down slowly so that you don't get a lot of runoff. And okay. that's what, um, this is kind of the new rage right now. Okay. And these are actually compatible with rotors uh, if you nozzle them correctly. Okay. And so they're great. And you cool. can put different sizes and they do different directions and they do all kinds of cool things. So they're, so they're really great. And if people have an older controller and they're tired of it or they want to save water, they can get new controllers with weather sensor. They're great because what happens is when it rains, it'll turn off the controller so you're not watering in the rain, as you've all seen. Wow. And the other great thing is okay, cool. it also reduces the run time of your zone if it's cloudy, so it takes that into consideration. Okay. And Where uh, does that sensor exist? I mean, Well, if you've you got hang it on your house in the sun. Oh, and it's okay. wireless, so it goes from the controller to the sensor. The sensor reads the weather conditions and it says, okay, I'm not watering anymore, and it shuts it down. How seriously and the best cool part, is that? 300 bucks back from the government. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That is the best. All right, Steve, thank you so much. It's been very informative. So any questions, you can call Steve or anybody else that you might have contact with in the irrigation industry because we have zero snowpack and only 15% of our water level from last year, and it's only June. So very, very important moving forward in the next four months. Pay attention to what you're doing. Right now, we are going to have a little taste of summer with this story. Water is a big issue. Please check out the Comox Valley Regional District website for more information. If you do not have website or internet access, please call them because the only way that we're going to get through the next four months is for everybody to honor the water restrictions and the fire bans. It's really, really crucial. And right now, June is Head Injury Month Awareness Month. So Marjorie Greaves has done a three-part spotlight series. Here is part one. Go began today's show out at the Comox Lake, and you've got to be careful out there because that is our drinking water. Thank you to Bob Wells for all the information. Then we headed into Comox to the fire department and chatted with Chief 
Gorge Shriner, please pay attention to the fire ban and do not break it. It's really important. We love our trees and we want to keep them. And of course, thank you to Steve Gray of MRM Irrigation for bringing us up to speed on the latest technology to help you with your water restrictions by using weather sensitive smart meters for your sprinklers and really um, water efficient heads on the sprinklers. Really cool innovations happening in that particular field. So thank you so much for watching. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Have a fabulous day.